Hello. So I'm going to start with my talk about um, mirrors, about content delivery networks, and about delivering free software. My name is Peter, and um, if you haven't heard CDN before, CDN is short for content delivery networks, networks that are specialized for pushing stuff to users who want to get it. Um, I don't want to bore you with technical details about all this today. I rather want to share my vision. I have a vision for the future, how to improve on these um, things. And uh, this I want to share with you. And I hope you find it interesting and maybe we can stimulate some things that we can do together later. So, what is it about? Uh, if you look at the world of uh, free software projects, then there are many, many projects that have stuff that uh, they do for users and give to them, and uh, there are larger ones and smaller ones, and um, all these uh, share the same challenge. Some, some of these projects uh, provide content that is really huge, like uh, CD images or larger software packages like OpenOffice, while other other of these content providers provide smaller bits that are less problematic but may also be highly popular and mirrored around the world, like the Linux kernel, for example. And um, <clears throat> solutions to get this stuff to users exist in um, three forms. A content delivery network could be either a commercial one, that would be that. The commercial content delivery networks are really specialized in that, like Akamai or YouTube. Um, they, are, they would be very nice to use for open source software projects, but they are really expensive. They do what they do well, and it's, uh, you have to pay for it a lot. The second type of content delivery networks is um, things that the academic world came up with during the last 10, 20 years. There are some approaches that are highly interesting, but they, are never, they never reach the production stage. Often they are, they are too complex to really be implemented, and um, often they have, for example, features like uh, bandwidth and latency measurements between users, and you might need uh, nodes around the world for that to do these measurements, and client feedback has to be provided to some servers, and um, this is hard to implement because uh, then it doesn't work with a normal web browser, for example. And you need infrastructure, real machines that are placed somewhere that do this work. So the academic um, Approaches are sometimes um, it's nice to read on them, but um, only few of them are really in use, only one actually. And the third approach, which is uh, very popular and, popular and also very traditional, is to use mirrors. Mirrors are server machines contributed or provided by universities mostly by ISPs or also by private persons. So you download stuff from a mirror. And um, there are about, let's say, 300 mirrors around the world which provide this service. And um, many of them you know well because you come back to them again and again. 
So how do we deal with these mirrors? How, how is this organized? Let's uh, go to some examples. I have um, put some logos here of some approaches for this task. These are the commercial guys. Akamai is used by Apple, Microsoft, Novell to provide their software updates. Limelight is actually uh, providing YouTube, for example. Then uh, you all know SourceForge. SourceForge has uh, a few mirrors, but very large ones. They have a web front-end approach to, for users to get to this, to this stuff. And um, another approach is uh, the mirror manager of Fedora, which has, again, a slightly different approach. It is um, not working on file level, it's working on directory level. So it doesn't know exactly if a particular file is on a mirror, but it has some kind of state database which knows roughly what mirrors do have. There is a Bouncer. Bouncer is used by Mozilla and by OpenOffice. There are actually two versions of Bouncer, and um, one of them does not actually... One of them is able to distribute client requests on a geographic basis to mirrors in, the, in that region, um, which Fedora also does. They didn't mention that. So that's probably something that you always want to do because uh, connections to closer, closer mirrors always work better, or typically work better. There's another Bouncer version that uh, does not support this which isn't used by OpenOffice. There is the Debian-style approach, which basically just um, does a schematic um, assignment of mirrors on a country and DNS round-robin base. There is the um, Mandriva approach, which... Um, Pear knows much better than me. Yeah. And oh. we have a micro. Probably better. Hey, yeah, uh, first we tried to, well, I implemented uh, using Metalinks, which we still do. But uh, we had uh, it on the server side where it generated uh, Metalinks based on uh, the coordinates with the latitude and longitude and calculated the distance to the nearest mirrors which would uh, be done on the server side, but uh, it uh, would require a lot more. So uh, then we switched to doing it by, based on, on the user's uh, time zone and co coordinates there on the user side. So now it just generates make links locally and uh, <coughs> automatically picks the mirrors, which it fetches from uh, the Andriva mirror list, uh, which is updated every now and then. So, yeah. That's about it. Yeah, that's a very advanced and very nice system, actually. Especially the new, especially the new uh, MetaLink generation. Um, let's switch this off. The geographic coordinates, do you get them from GeoIP? Or? Uh, I did it the first on the server side. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so... The, the, yeah. Okay, so the client provides info to the server, and the server decides where to send it. Ah, no longer. Okay. But it does provide the time zone to the server. Yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. 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 So the client provides some info to the server, which allows it to select a mirror. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this also means or implies that uh, this, appro this approach requires a specialized client. 
So you couldn't use it with wget or normal web browser. I mean, web browsers send something like language header, so if you go to a site, then it can decide on that, but sometimes that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, not, let's not too t talk too much about Metalinks uh, and uh, I will focus for a moment on the comparison of these approaches again. Um, Mirror Brain is uh, what Suse came up with two years ago and uh, what is developed, still developed since then. It is an approach that does not require a specialized client, but it can work with specialized, specialized clients to do a more advanced mirror selection. And uh, as I said, I don't want to bore you with technical details, but uh, two other approaches that are a bit similar is, um, these are th those academic guys. Um, Coral, Coral CDN is um, it's actually highly interesting and it's working to some extent, but it has the disadvantage that um, it requires the, uh, to, uh, the it requires you to use different URLs. You have to prefix some other host name to get something from the network. So it, again, it's not transparent to plain HTTP and FTP protocol that uh, many clients use. Codeine is uh, the only candidate that might um, maybe uh, reach uh, more popularity in the future. It is in some production use. I actually know a uh, few mirrors that take part in it and uh, use it for some specialized or for, su for some things, like a US American mirror delivering stuff to Singapore, I think. He has uh, been using that and find it works well. So all these are a little bit different from each other and uh, may require a client that is specialized or not. That's one of the differences. And um, yeah. If you look at this picture, this is what I see when I look at the mirror framework landscape. There are lots of different frameworks and they are separate and um, apart from those I just uh, showed you, the few, there are many, many others like uh, Apache Software Foundation has a quite a simple redirector that uh, where you can choose mirrors manually and uh, many other software content providers uh, do have some very small solution and uh, so the need is there and um, everyone tries to solve it in a simple way and um, I will talk uh, in a few minutes I will talk a bit more why it isn't isn't so simple to to do it in a simple way it's quite a challenge actually to assign clients to a good mirror and uh, also to provide the client a way to fall back to another mirror and so on. <clears throat> These things are called uh, cans. I don't know if you know the word. If you go for hiking in uh, English speaking countries, then you often see them. They are actually useful. They can show the way. You can mark a path and uh, see where you go. But uh, this is uh, not so, not leading anywhere. So what we rather should have is something like this. This is a, the roof of a church and uh, it's, it's a building that uh, has been built by collaboration and cooperation. So how do we get from here to there? We need, uh, or I think, we really should do, should introduce more collaboration on these things. And um, 
What often happens, what you often see happening is that um, communities are separate like these. Like the boys and the girls, they don't talk to each other, they are afraid of each other, and um, it also, so it's, you can also see this in um, open source communities. Like, you care about your vicinity, but you don't really know what the others do, and there's a lot to learn from each other, and they have something that they don't have, and vice versa. So, um, I already mentioned that uh, it's not so easy as it might look at first with um, dealing with mirrors. And uh, I will give you some reasons for, I will describe some reasons why is this, why is this not easy. And uh, I'm going to show you on a little example. The example is picking mushrooms and um, then deciding which ones you want to eat. Because uh, if you ever did that, then you know, you look into books, internet, um, each mushroom might be growing together with others that are not the same type, and you have to look at each one carefully and so on. It's quite a complicated business. And uh, so let's try to explain how the selection of mirrors can be done. Um, on this background. So first question would be, does the mirror have the file in question? So we need to scan the mirrors, which can be done from a central location. The mirrors, is not, the mirrors don't have to have uh, some software on it because they already provide the content like HTTP, FTP, rsync, so we can look at them. Another question would be, is the mirror close, or the mirrors in question, are they close to the client? so they could provide good service. Might the mirror be trustable? No, mirrors are never trustable because they could always be uh, hacked or broken or there could be broken firewall in between and uh, it could deliver garbage or actually manipulated stuff. So um, it is very useful if you can sign your content and actually provide the signatures or verification hashes together with the content or for, for, for some files it just makes sense, may make sense to just uh, do it yourself and uh, just send the file yourself. If it's not a large file then that's fine. So for example all the signature files on your file tree you can just deliver yourself. They may not be even uh, larger at all than an HTTP redirect which is also 1500 bytes. There may be private mirrors, mirrors marked as private that are only meant for used by, to be used by a limited um, group of network clients. Mirrors can have very different performance, there are big ones, better ones, and uh, you have to prior prioritize on them and uh, try to achieve a load balance between them. For the larger files, you may actually want to verify if the server is actually able to deliver that correctly. That's about 20% um, of mirrors can't do that. Either on FTP or HTTP, uh, they are broken in this regard. Many mirrors are useful, but uh, if they have to provide DVD images and extremely large content, then they just go down to their knees. So it may be useful to exclude them for bike delivery. And then you have to monitor the mirrors if they are actually available, because uh, mirrors have to be rebooted, they die for various reasons, and uh, you have to monitor them quite closely and uh, no longer send clients there if there are problems. Clients may actually send along with their request some preference and uh, you might have to, you might want to respect that and because sometimes the client just knows better what's good for him and what works for him. So it would be good to have uh, provision for that. And uh, finally, 
you cannot just go ahead and choose one mirror because uh, this mirror might just not be available or it might not have the file and then you you more or less have a sorted list of um, better, better, not so good mirrors and um, you can give fallbacks to the clients and um, yeah. <coughs> So these are some these were some um, things that make mirror selection a not so easy task, and it's not something that you implement in in a day. And uh, actually, all those most of those problem problems you don't even you're not even aware of them if you start. Uh, I certainly wasn't <laughs> when I started, and uh, it's you'd rather learn about this problem during your de deployment and development and you start to collect experience and, there, and the different use cases. So, <clears throat> this all, I believe, is solved in the mirror brain infrastructure. And um, I also believe it is solved in a way that, is, that would be very useful for other content providers to use. And... Um, I lost track. Ah, okay. Um, after talking about uh, the server side for so long, um, it might be useful to talk about the client side, the other end, for a few slides. And um, you all know classic um, HTTP and FTP clients and web browsers, but you may also have heard of uh, Metalink clients. Metalink clients are specialized download clients that combine, combine uh, FTP, HTTP, and uh, also BitTorrent into a powerful download client that can work um, intelligently and um, fail over and if it encounters errors and problems, connection problems or broken content, uh, it can verify this and it can actually continue downloading from elsewhere. These clients also can download in parallel so they can try to max out in your internet connection and get the content faster. And these clients are, I, let's call them intelligent and um, meta links uh, the MetaLink client need information to do this job, and this job is provided to them by what's called MetaLinks. And so-called MetaLink is is just a mirror list, a mirror list in XML formatted, so it's machine readable, and um, it is also it also cont it can includes it can include hashes and signatures for the files so the client has all that it needs to successfully download the file from somewhere so what really happens is a knowledge transfer from the server who knows the mirrors to the client who wants to use them and uh, this works pretty well and um, <clears throat> I have a nice quote on that from Anthony, the guy who invented the Metalinks, which I was delighted to read from him. And uh, actually, this combination is really a powerful combination because um, this is what really makes things work. You can have the best server and database and mirror database and mirror scanning and everything and mirror selection in the world. But as long as the client is just a stupid FTP client, it will just, or a HTTP client, it will just follow a redirect that you suggest to him, and then it will either work or it will not work. And uh, whenever you want to implement some, or want to have something like uh, try again or try another mirror, then you have to have some, some, something on top of HTTP and, and FTP. And this is what MetaLinks do. So back to the larger picture. If 
you look at the world map, then there are quite some countries and uh, regions that are far apart and there are also different parts of the world with a lot of internet connection and uh, less internet connection. And um, looking at this, at this map, I can uh, give you some more reasons to believe me that it's not, not easy to select mirrors because uh, it's, you, want to, you want to assign a mirror that is close to a client, but uh, often this doesn't work by just measuring the distance because the network topology looks um, extremely different from this. And I will um, show you a few examples. First example is New Zealand. New Zealand is, uh, okay, it's, qu it's quite a simple case. Uh, it has a, an edge um, localization quite there at the end. And uh, it's simple to see that uh, they have proper, proper connection over their connectivity, but to the rest of the world it's much worse. And um, they also have some connectivity to the west coast of the US, I have heard. But uh, I have heard this from someone, but I actually don't know. This is one of the problems. So while this New Zealand case is pretty obvious, uh, there are also still some things that you need to find out. So anyway, it's a good rule of thumb to just send clients from New Zealand to an Australian mirror. But if there, are no, if there is no Australian mirror, then you already have to decide which one is next. And the chances are that um, these are not good because they don't have much interconnectivity. Often um, interconnectivity to the internet centers of the world is much better than um, from here to there. Because especially in Africa, um, often people are connected with satellite links that go to where they want to go, not to their neighbors. Another interesting case is Russia. Russia is an extremely large country. And um, I know from a lot of feedback I got that, yeah, I learned a few things. I learned that uh, China, Russia doesn't work. This continent called Asia would be the normal unit of um, geographical thinking when you use a certain library, GeoIP, for looking up um, client, the, the, the lo um, if you locate a client and look, look up its, uh, where it is. And uh, in this case, Asia as a unit doesn't work well because um, there's not good connectivity between those large parts. And um, other special things about Russia are that, uh, for example, Ukraine can't get to these mirrors that are here, maybe for political reasons, I'm not sure. Russian users have a very bad uh, connectivity to other Asian mirrors, which admittedly are quite far away. Russian mirrors have good connectivity to German mirrors. So you have to really have to some special cases and uh, handle certain countries specially. So never assigned to there from Ukraine, but assigned to always assigned to Germany or something like that. It makes it rather interesting. And any, any simple scheme, um, will not work for all the countries and for very long. As soon as you start to learn about all these particular cases, then uh, it becomes quite complex. Another interesting case is uh, South Africa, where basically South Africa, at the tip of uh, Africa, has uh, like, f I know, five mirrors there. And uh, the rest of Africa has none. So it's really quite concentrated here. And uh, the neighboring countries actually um, have uh, decent connectivity to South Africa from what I've heard. But uh, Mozambique, for example, doesn't get uh, good connectivity to South African mirrors. So Mozambique is better assigned to German mirrors again because satellite 
international link goes there. So this is another <coughs> interesting exception or regional, a regional particularity. If you think about internet connectivity, then uh, I think for most people in this room, it more or less looks like this, like a high-speed motorway. But um, often we are not aware that for other people it may look completely different. So there is a large part in the world where many people live more than in the well-educated, rich and well-connected countries that uh, don't have um, connectivity as good as this. So a child in Africa may not have the opportunity to learn, to be educated, but education and information are key for being healthy and living a healthy life and finding a job and so on. And um, people in less well-connected areas also need uh, to download stuff. Simple, for simple reasons, they need to download software like OpenOffice. OpenOffice is, uh, is quite, plays quite a role in this because it's a free so a soft office production suite and um, it's really needed in people, for people around the world and uh, it's also why it's so popular. And people have um, big uh, problems to download OpenOffice because it's about a 100 megabyte download or a bit more and that can, uh, can be very hard to download. I have two quotes here from... I quoted them from memory, but this is what some people said who are affected by the situation. So I believe that mirror selection that uh, helps them would be very worthwhile. If you look at the percentage of people in the world who have internet access, that's 22%. So there's four-fifths of the world doesn't have internet access at all. And um, of these people who have internet con connectivity at all, I have some numbers here about the percentage of those who have broadband con connection, like DSL, something fast. So in Germany, it's about 24%. Korea, it's 8%. The Slovak Rep Republic is 6% only, which is amazing because it's in the middle of Europe. And um, in the poorer countries, it ranges between 1% and 3%. So there is a lot of, there is a lot of users who have only bad connectivity and no, no broadband. So we can help them a lot. So the question, back to the question, how do we get from the unorganized, chaotic, separate solutions to the big solution? This is practically how I see the mirrors organized. It's just that they are not well organized, not as clear as here, but uh, it's a very loose organization. The thing is that uh, the mirrors, those guys, they are the same for Fedora, for Ubuntu, for OpenOffice, for SUSE, and so on. You always meet the same guys again. So any of these mirrors a lot of projects. So what the user sees is the mirror, or what you think about is this mirror or that mirror, but actually this, this machine mirrors several projects. This one actually the same, and uh, this is very similar. It's just another file tree, different layout, different sync times, and a different set of product, projects that are mirrored. But uh, in principle you could see these elements and uh, try to think about uh, how to get this in structure. So
So instead of uh, setting up Mirrorbrain for every project, which would involve quite some overhead because each of them would have to know the mirrors and keep a database and so on, you could also have one big database which knows about the mirrors, knows about the, the servers, the contact persons, about the content providers, and um, keep this in line together. And this is actually not uh, just... Uh, Dream is actually not far from implemented. I'm working on the next generation database scheme that uh, provisions for that. So this, is, this becomes possible. And it's not a big step, it's just uh, making things easier so you don't have to store mirror many times. So this nearly exists. And um, a common database could actually lead to another thing, a common file tree, because uh, those mirrors could actually have the same file layout, which would make it even easier to find around on them and to have a database that reflects their file tree. But this, at this point, it already becomes... Um, might become difficult again because uh, nobody knows if this is ever possible to implement because um, it would involve changes on every mirror and uh, I can say from experience that um, most of these 200 mirrors that I work with for SUSE like 50% I have contact persons and the other three quarters or other, other two quarters no, the other half, maybe I don't, have, I don't even have a contact person, I don't find out about one, I don't reach anyone, uh, even if I try per phone, and um, it's very hard to get hold of people that are so far away and um, they don't publish the email address or it's completely outdated. And uh, it's, it's, it would be an illusion to, to say, okay, let's get all these together and um, change everything because it would never happen. And these mirrors are also very different, very different operating systems. Syncing of mirrors is also an interesting topic, topic for collaboration and for improvement, because everybody has some scripts that are better or worse, and uh, it would be very interesting to, help, to, to have something working that which we can share. So altogether, this, would, this could form some free content delivery network that would actually deserve the name of a content delivery network and wouldn't just be what we have now, which is uh, some isolated solutions and very different mirrors. And uh, as you might, might understand now, the, the business of selecting mirrors and it's not so easy and uh, most other solutions won't get that right because it's a lot of work. So here's my call for collaboration. I want, I want uh, mirror owners and content providers and um, users and researchers to join a mailing list and to talk about these things because uh, it's, it's very important to talk about this and it's always enlightening if you talk to I talked I, I talk to Fedora guy to Pear from Riva and so on and it's always enlightening because uh, everybody like these Specialized guys also have a lot of lots of good thoughts about this, and um, mirror admins from around the world have their picture about their region and what happens there and what's the political situation, why is there no connectivity between North and South Korea and so on, and we need to get this knowledge together. And um, the interesting thing is that a mailing list like this doesn't even exist. There is no common forum for these things. I think there have been news group like 20 years ago uh, which where, where these people were gathered but um, 
there's no place to meet, him, to meet them, except you join the Fedora mailing, mirror mailing list or the Susan mirror mailing list or the Open Office mirror mailing list. And then you always meet the same community, but there's no shared forum where also the content providers are together. But there's a lot of potential to, to get them together. So this basically is what I wanted to share with you. Thank you for listening. And I hope you have some input.